This is Lac La Croix, Ron Gieschik's home, as it used to be about 30 years ago. One of the first people that I interviewed at Lac La Croix in that community was, was Ron Gijic. Um, at the time, he was working as uh, the traditional storyteller in the school. Judith Doyle was in the community filming this documentary. His parents uh, hid him on the trap line, and so he never went to residential school. And Ron's father was the traditional teacher and healer in their community, uh, and that job went to Ron. He had written down some of these stories um, as a way to remember them for his teaching. And uh, as I got to know him better, uh, I asked him if he would be interested in working on a book. And he was. He gave it a lot of very careful thought and decided that it was important that these stories be set down so that young people in the community in the future would have those stories. Ron Gieschik's stories were published in De Buewin in 1989, and that became his legacy. He passed into the spirit world in 1996. Chuck Bourgeois is a PhD student in Native Studies. He came across De Buewin about a decade ago when he was in Thunder Bay learning an indigenous language from an elder. Got a copy of uh, De Buewin. And I mean, I just read it cover to cover in one sitting. It's, a, it's an amazing story uh, about Ron's life, you know, hunting and trapping and fishing in Lac La Croix and just daily res life, but also his experiences as a medicine person and as a healer. A few years later, Bourgeois read a book of short stories by a well-known Canadian author, Joseph Boyden. And I'm reading through Born with a Tooth and somewhere in the middle one of his characters and his stories is a medicine person. And that medicine person tells the story of how he became a medicine person. And it just kind of hit me right away that it was that exact story I had read in De Buewin, uh, or in Ron Gijic's autobiography. He didn't say anything at the time, but this past December he took a second look. When uh, Mr. Boyden's story came out over the holidays, I, I was reminded of it, and I actually took the two books out, and they're almost identical. Bourgeois contacted APTN, sending us an analysis of the similarities in the two stories. For example, in this passage, Ron Gieschik writes, So I bolted my door with these knives that I jammed sideways. In his own story, Boyden writes, Antoine bolted his door by jamming knives into the crack between the door and frame. Similarly here, Gieschik writes, I didn't want drunks walking in on me when I was sick like that, and I just lay on my couch. Boyden writes, he didn't want kids or drunks seeing him when he was sick like that, and he lay on his couch for a week. And here where Gieschik writes, the Lord came in, he had two helpers along with him, and they were dressed all in black with white shirts and black ties. Boyden writes, the Lord came with two helpers, and... They were all dressed in black suits with white button shirts. In all, about four paragraphs appear to be similar. APTN took the information back to Doyle, the co-author of De Buewin. The two stories have features that are very similar. The story begins with the knives being inserted in a frame of a door as a way of protecting somebody who's sick. They're sick for X period of time. They're visited by the Lord. He has two helpers. The Lord's helpers are dressed in black coats and white shirts. A gift is given by the Lord. The gift is the x-ray vision gift. The Lord then goes and the story ends with the knives remaining in place just where they had been put. We asked Joseph Boyden for an on-camera interview about the similarity between the passages. He declined but sent a statement. Boyden didn't mention Gishik or De Buewin. He said he heard the story from another source and called it a modern parable that he'd heard in at least two places, once in Fort Albany and again in and around Moussigny. His statement reads in part, 
I have always been fascinated by the oral stories that travel through communities. I first encountered this one in Fort Albany in the mid-1990s, hearing it from an old man named Xavier Bird, who spoke to me about the Lord and his helpers appearing as old-fashioned preachers, visiting a sick man, barred in his room, and giving him the gift of sight. I was working in North at the time, gathering stories for a project called Shabotawan. I heard the story again in Musini, the place where I first witnessed people keeping their doors shut with butter knives. Xavier Bird was a trapper and died in the mid-1990s. His brother, Louis Bird, is a well-known storyteller who's been collecting the stories of the Meshkegawit Cree since the 1960s. I, you say that John, uh, Joseph said Xavier told him about the story of the yeah. sick man and also the two helpers of what, who? <laughs> and that's something that is very strange for me. The kind of stories that we tell, we, it has nothing to do with, uh, with the Lord help, with the black suited man with the white tie, with the white shirt. There's no such thing exists in our brain. If you actually say that he spoke to him, I don't know about that. But I know one thing, my brother doesn't tell a story like I do. He just, when he wants to speak about something he speaks about only, is hunting and trapping skills and also some of the things that he does everyday living so the the subject that you talk about about the uh, the two helpers of god whatever it is with the black black sword and a white tie my brother doesn't associate any such thing cody otter tail is a modern dancer and he is developing a dance performance based on Gishik's stories. He's also from Gishik's community, Lac La Croix, and knows the Gishik family. He believes the story in Gishik's book came from a personal account. Ottertail says there's protocol when using someone's stories, which should be followed. It can be a scary thing for the protocol if you don't, doc if you don't take the right steps in order to document it. APTN tried to follow up with Boyden for further comment. His lawyer sent us this statement. Mr. Boyden has plagiarized nothing in his book, Born with a Tooth, nor any of his other works. Your allegations against Mr. Boyden are neither fair nor accurate and can only be characterized as a malicious attack on our client. The speculative and reckless allegations thus far made by you are defamatory of his person and actionable. As for Judith Doyle and the Gishik family, they're still coming to terms with the situation. This was a shock. And I asked Ron's daughter last night, is there anything you want me to say? And she said, it's straightforward. And I guess I still feel like it's, uh, it's complicated, but in a way it's straightforward if you read the stories. Jorge Barrera, APN National News, Ottawa.